so what I'll show you today is three really easy ways to make YouTube videos. Um, even if you have absolutely no video experience whatsoever, I think you'll find that these are nice ways to get started. Um, you basically have two choices when you're making YouTube videos. This um, snapshot here that you see on the left is if you have a webcam looking down at a piece of paper. So you can use some kind of recording equipment like a webcam or a digital camcorder, um, even a smartphone. Smartphones have really good resolution now. Um, so you know, put it on a tripod or looking down somehow, and you can make a video very quickly at YouTube that way. Your other option is to do screen capture, which is the snapshot you see on the right. And um, this is some uh, a video that somebody else took a professor over at Mount Wachusett Community College because uh, I don't do a lot of the screen capture ones. I've only done a few of those. But as you can see, it gives you a lot more options. So you can still write in there if you have um, a tablet to write on. Uh, you, can text. you can also um, copy and paste different images from, let's say, an e-text or something like that. Um, so one thing to think about as we go through the demos is what uh, level material or type of material do you want to make videos for? Um, if you're going to have a lot of word problems or a lot of complicated graphs to make, you're probably going to want to go screen capture route and use a tablet. Uh, if you're just doing out equations, factoring, and maybe some simple graphs, you'll probably be fine with just a webcam. Um, and we'll also talk about how do you link your students over to the videos once you make them. Um, okay, so just an overview for the equipment and the software. And you don't have to buy everything that I've listed here. I just kind of wanted you all to have it in one place to refer to. Uh, if you decide that you want to go the webcam route, and that's probably the fastest and easiest way to just get started and try it out, then really all you need is a webcam sitting on a tripod, and that's it, and a high-speed connection, and you can make videos. Um, so this is the setup I've got on my um, desk at home here. And I've had really good luck with Logitech webcams, but you can use anything. You know, if you've got a camcorder or another webcam, that'll work fine. If you decide to go the screen capture route, uh, then you got a couple of choices. The an expensive choice would be a tablet PC, um, which is what I usually use, and it just crashed. Um, so I'm not going to use that today. But a tablet PC works very well. Um, the other option is an external tablet. So I'll be using a bamboo pen tablet today, and those are like seventy dollars. Um, so they're well worth it, especially if you're doing online courses. They're great to have. Because you can also do online office hours with them, which we won't have time to get into today, but there's some great websites for that, too. Um, let's see. So you need a, some kind of a tablet to write on if you want to be putting your handwriting into it. Uh, you might need to buy a microphone. Um, over here with the webcam option, most webcams have a microphone, so you don't even have to buy a mic usually. Now for the tablet root or screen capture, you're going to need software to screen capture, like Camtasia. Um, that runs a few hundred dollars for a free version, which is Jing. And you're also going to need uh, software on the computer to write on the computer screen. So you'll either need Microsoft Journal, which usually comes with a tablet PC, or if you're using the external tablet, like I'm going to do today, you can do use SmoothDraw 3, which is a free program that you can download on. And just so you know, um, if you are buying software, you can get everything very inexpensively at academicsuperstore.com. That's academicsuperstore.com. So you can get everything for just about half price if you go there. OK, so uh, before we make some videos, um, what I thought I'd do is show you what it looks like from the student's view. Uh, how are they accessing the videos and what do they look like? Because you'll see once we get over to YouTube, there's a lot going on there visually. And um, it's kind of hard to know exactly what the student's going to see when you make a video over there. So I'm going to move away from the PowerPoint now. Let's hop into one of my courses. And this is my beginning algebra course from last semester. This is an online course. And the nice thing about YouTube is that um, no matter how you want to link to things, whether you want to link to just a video or you want to link to YouTube itself or your YouTube channel, it's just a website address. So it's an external link. So you can use that in any course management system you have. Now I use my MATLAB for all of my courses. 
Um, this opens up to an announcement page, and then you've got navigation buttons running down the left side. Um, and in my math lab, you can put external links pretty much anywhere you want to. Uh, what I used to do was put in the external link right in a navigation button. So like instead of due dates, I would have this saying YouTube videos or something like that. And the students could access them from there. What I do now is I put them right into the homework. And that's nice because I can make media assignments that embed the YouTube videos right where the students are going to be needing them. So let's pop one open and we can see what they're seeing. Um, and I'll go through the details of how you actually make this linking happen after we make some videos. And then we'll come back here and go through the linking details. Um, so what I do for the online homework is I have every for every section of the book a text and video media assignment and then the regular My Math Lab homework assignment. And it goes like that all the way down. And I'm going to pop open one of the graphing uh, sections because that's where I tend to make a lot of videos is for the um, very visual topics. And so here you can see that right within this section they'll have the My Math Lab e-text that they can look at my math lab video lecture, and then a bunch of homework help videos. So I usually don't make entire uh, video lessons or section lessons. I just do homework, answer homework questions. So they just pop it open, and it opens you know, nice and big, easy to see. And it has audio, but I think I've got my speaker turned on. So it's got some audio there also. And they can fast forward, they can rewind, they can pause, just like with the My Math Lab videos. And because it opens nice and big like this, and it's just you know a, a hand doing on a problem, if they're away from a computer and they've got their book with them and they're doing homework, they can check these out on a smartphone too. And you can even max out the screen. Um, so it's very easy to view these on a smartphone, which a lot of the students find really handy. Okay, so that's just a quick look at what the student's seeing. And there. And you know, the basic idea once we get over to YouTube is um, that these are just uh, website addresses that we paste in as external links. So let's hop on over to YouTube now, and we'll make some videos. All right, let's see. First thing you got to do is create a YouTube account for yourself. Um, so you just go into create account and basically that create a username and a password. And I'll just go ahead and put mine in. And if you don't have a Google account yet or a Gmail address, it will ask you to create one. Um, but that does not mean that you're going to have to always go and check this new email address, you know, a Gmail account now, um, for any kind of YouTube emails, because you can still connect your YouTube account to whatever email address you want. So I actually completely forgot what my Gmail address is that I connected this to. So hopefully I don't need it. And um, once you make an account, you automatically have a YouTube channel. So you've got your very own YouTube website, and you don't have to do anything in order to create it. And there's a couple of ways you can access it. Uh, right here where you see my username at the top right, there's a drop down menu. And this is how you can navigate around your YouTube account. So we could right now go right to my channel. And that's one way to get to it. And the more generic way to get to it, which is something really nice to tell your students, is right up here in the address field. Whoops. That wasn't where I wanted to go. Get me back. Okay. So right here in the address field, your YouTube account will be, or your channel is youtube.com slash, and then you put in whatever your username is. So that's the uh, channel name you can give to your students, which means you don't have to put them into your videos in the course website if you don't want to. They can just come here and search at YouTube. Um, now, as I'm going through stuff, just let me know if you have any questions, you know, if you'd like any more details about anything I'm talking about up here, just so I don't go through something too fast without realizing it. Um, now, when you make your YouTube channel, 
and you start making videos. So right here, we could click upload and start making videos. As you make videos, YouTube will populate your channel for you. So again, you don't have to know anything about website design. There are a few different formats for the look of the channel that you could pick, and you would pick it right here through the settings button. Now, I happen to pick the setting that lets me put playlists. So I took all my videos and um, put them into different playlists to make them easily searchable for any YouTubers out there. And uh, that's something I only did within the last, I don't know, maybe six months or something like that. Um, and you can order, you know, I organize them by topics, but you can also do it by course instead or something like that. But if you don't want to at first organize them by playlists, I think the default setting will be, um, the default format is to show your feed, which means your activity. So every time you uplo upload a new video, it'll show here. But basically, whatever, whatever format you use, your students can always come here and go in the search field on the right and search for any video they want, any topic. So one of the topics my students have trouble with is Kramer's rule for a 3 by 3 system. Uh, so any topic that you have, it will find a match, and your students can play the videos that, you know, go with the match for the topic they're looking for. Now, once you're playing a video on YouTube, and whether it's, you know, a video you've made, or it could be a video that anybody has made, um, you can look right at the bottom of it, and if the person has agreed to share their videos, then you can copy it in. There'll be a share button. And you can go here and you know copy this URL address, and that's the URL address or the website address for this particular video. Um, so that's how you can link to any video that you want. You go back to your course website and put it in there. So we'll do that once we uh, make a few videos. All right, so that's just the general idea of your channel. So let's actually make some videos now and start working with those. So we go to Upload. And you've got two options for uploading videos. You can either upload a video that already exists on your computer, so it's a video you've made ahead of time, or you can record directly from a webcam. And as you do the problem out, it's automatically uploading to YouTube. So I'm going to do that first, because this is the fastest and easiest way to get started with YouTube videos is just record from webcam. The downside is that it's not going to be recorded on a hard drive, so that's something you want to think about ahead of time. Um, first thing you have to do is allow YouTube to see your webcam and also to access your microphone. And so now you see the piece of paper I've got on my desk, and I've got the webcam looking right down at it. And you also want to make sure that your audio is going, you know, so you don't record a 10-minute video and realize, uh-oh, I didn't have my audio going. Um, so just on the right side here, you can see that the microphone bar, there's supposed to be a green bar here, is not moving. So that means I want to go look at my drop-down menu for microphone and choose Logitech microphone, and that is the webcam I have. So Logitech mics have a, or webcam, have a really good microphone with them. Uh, you can also just have any kind of microphone that you plug into your computer, and it'll show up here under your choices. Um, if you get to the screen and you don't see what your webcam is seeing, then you want to, you know, do the drop-down menu for the camera and tell it what webcam to look through if you have more than one. And then we are ready to record. No, oh. all right, we got some Friday the end. 13th stuff happening here. Okay. All right, let me get that started again. Let's see what happens. Record from webcam. Allow. Okay, so it looks like it saved those choices I had made from microphone and webcam, so we're good to go. And I'm going to keep this to be a short video just so it doesn't take long to upload. We hit record. Add four to both sides, and we get x is equal to 10. And that's it. So you can really crank out the videos 
pretty quickly if you're doing it by record from webcam. And we can preview it if we want to, uh, but generally I don't really do that. I just go ahead and publish it. And publishing means, okay, it's at YouTube and now YouTube is processing it and it'll be ready for us to watch pretty soon. And that's basically it. Yep, here we go. So that's basically it. That makes a video for you. And um, then you could just keep making more videos if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to work with the one that you just made, then you can fill in the title and things like that. So let's go ahead and fill in these fields. Uh, let's see, for title, I would probably put for this one, solve linear equation. And description, I might put something a little bit more detailed um, about the equation if it had fractions or decimals in it. Uh, for tag, you want to put any common words that people are going to search on when they're looking for help at YouTube. Um, and also this pops up in Google searches too. So I might put in algebra, uh, probably linear equation, you know, anything else I think might help this video pop up. And category, education, and basically everything else I just leave default. But let's take a look at it, and you know, in case you haven't seen these before, so you'll see the kinds of things that you're uh, given choices on. A uh, video thumbnail is just a screenshot of your video, so I just let YouTube set that. I always leave it public, and that's, that way people can search for it and find it very easily. This one I'm going to put private, just because it's a little demo video. And that means basically only I have access to it, unless I you know, enter in people's email addresses. The other option is unlisted. Um, and that one can come in handy once in a while, um, such as, like I made some videos that were training videos for faculty at my school, and you know I was talking about, okay, this is what students will typically have trouble with, blah, blah, blah. So I wanted just the instructors to watch that video, so I made it unlisted, but then I sent them the link by email, and then they could all watch it if they wanted to. Uh, but generally I leave it public, and um, License, I actually haven't looked too much into that. Um, I think standard license means that people have to contact you for permission um, to use your video or link to it. But in my channel, right at the start of my channel, I just said, you know, feel free to share these videos with anybody you want to. Um, so I kind of just leave that as the default here. And comments, I always allow comments automatically. Um, you will get an email every time a comment is put in, so you can. You can either um, decide to go and delete it if it's rude, or you can just leave it there. Um, and in about six years of making videos, I've had maybe a handful of rude comments. Um, so it's not many at all. Um, you know, people who are looking for help with math generally are not going to be putting rude comments in there. And, um, and you can also block the user if they put a rude comment in. So that's really nice to have. You also get very helpful comments, like um, somebody told me once that the audio wasn't working on one of my videos. So I was like, oh, thank you. So I went in and redid the video with audio. Uh, comment voting, I just allow that. Same with video responses. And those, by default, have to be approved. So that way you don't have to worry that you know anything's going to go up there that you don't want there. And ratings, I allow those. Um, those are handy because they kind of let you know what's working and what's not working. So I had a particular topic that was getting fewer stars, so I was like, oh, okay, I need to tweak my presentation here a bit. It's not getting the point across. So I find those helpful. Editing lets other people link to the website or to your video and embed them into their websites. And so that's pretty handy. I like to share the videos. And syndication is nice, too, because it lets people watch them on smartphones if they want to. And then we'll go up to save changes. And Denise, we actually just got a question, too. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, if you make a mistake on your video, can you delete them? Yes, you can delete any video you want. And so I'll show you how you can do that. We can go into, so again, the drop-down menu gets you to navigate and go to Video Manager to work with any video you've made. And you can um, delete any video you've made um, if you, you know, just don't want it for whatever reason. But a really nice feature in YouTube is that you can also put in little bubbles um, in case you made a mistake. 
And um, uh, if I can remember which video it is, when we get back to linking, um, if you remind me to find that video that has the bubble in it, because I know it's in my beginning algebra course, and I, I just have to fix an error recently. Um, so that's another way you can take care of errors. That works out very nice. And let's see. So here's the video we just made. You can also search on any video that you've made just by going into the search field. So let's take a look at the one we just made here. And it does have audio. Turn it up. And add four to both sides. And we get x is equal to 10. Like that. And then right up here, I believe in annotation, is where we could click and then put some bubbles in there. And maybe put, oops, that was supposed to be a two, not a five. You know, if you made a, a mistake on the last part of a 10 minute video, it kind of stinks to have to do the whole video over again. Um, so you can just throw in little bubbles. Okay, now that we are on the page where the video is, we go right to the share button. And I'm going to copy the URL address so that later we can go paste it into uh, my MATLAB. Okay, so we just make sure it's highlighted and control C. And we've got it copied. So we'll head back there afterwards. So that's basically what you do with record from a webcam. Does anybody have a question with that before we go on to the second method? Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next method, which is the next easiest method, I would say. Um, it will be one of the upload video choices. So if I'm going to upload um, a video that I already made and it's on my hard drive, um, I've got to make it first and save it to my computer. So I can either make it with a webcam or I can make it with screen capture software. So I'm going to do it with a webcam first because um, this is the second easiest way to make a video, I would think. Now, the advantage of doing it this way with a webcam and making the video first is that you're going to have it saved to your hard drive. Um, and that's nice to have, especially if this is part, if you're making videos as part of a project at school or something like that, and you're going to have to hand in and hand over the files, then you, you pretty much have to have them on a hard drive. Just um, be sure to have an external hard drive because it really slows down your computer otherwise. So I keep them all just saved to an external hard drive. Now if you've already made, if you make a bunch with just record from webcam and you don't have them saved, there is software out there you can use to download them from YouTube. Um, so if any of you have you know, questions about that software, you can just let me know and I can send you some ideas. Okay, so if we want to make a video with our webcam, then you open up the webcam control panel and this one was already open because it was open for the video we made before, but if it wasn't open yet, I would go to my Start button and All Programs, and then it would um, show up in there and I could choose my webcam from there. And then once it opens up, every webcam is going to have a slightly different look to it, but there should be, you know, one of the menu buttons is going to look like a video, so that's what I clicked on to open up the screen that you see now. And the only thing I really set here is the image size. If the image size is not 640 by 480, I, I put 640 by 480 only because that used to be the file size that worked best for YouTube. Now, YouTube's always changing and upgrading, and I think that that's not an issue anymore. But I just do that because that's the way I learned how to do it. Uh, so you might not even have to worry about the, the uh, dimensions like that. And then we're ready to go. We just record the video. So I'll just do the same problem out. We hit record. Let's add four to both sides. And we get x is equal to 10. And I hit stop record. Now down here, Highlighted in green is video two, so that's the one we just made. So I'll just remember that number when we go searching for it later. Now this particular webcam has a nice little feature, which is a YouTube shortcut button. And um, if you do that, you just hit the shortcut button, you put in the title 
and the different settings that you want, you know, for um, like allowing comments, that kind of stuff. And then hit send, and it sends it over to YouTube, and then you just kind of hop back over here and keep plugging out your videos. And that way you don't have to wait for each one to upload at YouTube before you uh, make a new one. So that's a really nice feature. Uh, but let's just go upload this one the generic way, because most of you probably have a different webcam than this one. So let's see, we can X out of here. We're done with that. And we want to now do that. Upload a video. And usually to find your um, videos, go into my documents. Or mine always shows up in a weird order. I don't like the order, so let me get the order right here. Okay. Um, so go into my documents, and my videos is where most webcams will default to. And then I find my um, Logitech webcam. And that was video number two. And open or double click on it. And it uploads to YouTube. Uh, so this saves it to your hard drive, which is really nice. But it takes about twice as long as using the record from webcam. Because as long as record from webcam, as long as it takes you to do out the problem, that's it. But if you use this method here, you have to do out the problem, so that's one step. And then you have to come over to YouTube and upload it, and it takes just about as long to upload it as it did to make it. So, you know, you've got about twice as long. But it's still fairly fast uh, to use this. And we fill in our choices. I'll say no for that one. And I'm just going to make this one private. And, you know, again, we fill in all the title and description and tags and all that stuff. And also, when you use this method, you get the URL address right away. So we could just copy this, go over to my math lab, paste it in. And that's pretty much it for uploading a video that you make with a webcam. And does anybody have any questions with any of those steps? I'll get us over to Video Manager. So we actually did get another question earlier. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Um, when you showed us where you can make it private and then put in email addresses for people who are allowed to see it, um, if you only want students from a particular class of yours to see a particular video, would you paste in the emails of all of those students, is that what you would recommend doing, or is there another shortcut to do it? You know, there's probably a shortcut. I think I avoided doing that just because it would be a lot of upkeep all the time, every class. So what you could do is, um, let me see, wait a minute, if I want to edit this one, I think I need to go back here. Yeah, edit, okay. And privacy. Okay, unlisted is um, anybody with the link can view it. So I think what I would do then is make it unlisted. And um, I'm going to go paste this link into the website so that my students can hit the link. So as long as the link is pasted there, they have access to it. Does that make sense? Yep, that's, that's a good answer. <laughs> Great. And, um, yeah, so I think that's probably the quickest workaround if you only want certain people to see it. You can also email it to all your students, but it is kind of nice to embed it somewhere in a course website, um, and that would allow them access also. Okay, so now we've got this one here, and that one you know, would be ready for us to edit, and you know, if we made mistakes, we could put annotations in it. Um, generally, I just leave it as is. I keep them pretty short and sweet, and I don't edit them unless I make a mistake, and then I do, which is another great thing about allowing comments. The YouTubers out there will tell you if you made a mistake, and they'll tell you very nicely. They're not, um, they're not rude at all. They're just going to say, I think that was supposed to be a five at the end, not a three. Um, so it, allowing comments means I don't have to watch every video I make. And there's probably been five or six of them where people, you know, emailed me or put a comment to the video, and um, then I just go in and put a little bubble, and that takes care of it. All right, the third way is the longest way to make the videos, but allows you the most options, and that's upload a video 
that you've already made and you made it using screen capture software. So the first thing we need to do is make our video. And usually what I do is um, on the Tablet PC, I use Microsoft Journal. I open that up and write on that with the Tablet PC pen. Um, but now using an external tablet, um, it works out just as well. Um, there's probably something out there similar to Microsoft Journal that you can buy, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, what I'm going to use is Smooth Draw 3. And that you can find online. You know, it's the Google search, free download. And if you've seen the any Khan Academy videos, um, he uses Smooth Draw 3 for all of his videos. So it's got a lot of really nice features. And let's see, what we'll do first is just um, do a really short video, again, so it doesn't take too long to process. So first I'm going to write down the equation that we want to solve. And I want to work with the pen, so I'm going to do x minus 4 equals 6. And now I'm going to open Camtasia. So before you open your screen capture software, so this will be either Camtasia or Jing. Um, um, I should say something about Jing. It's, it is free, whereas Camtasia is about $170 at academicsuperstore.com. But the downside is that you don't have the same functionality. It's not as powerful. And it's a little complicated as to how do you get the Jing file into a format that uploads to YouTube. Now, it is doable. And there's probably, you know, I know some people who have done it before, and I, just, I don't remember what software they use for it. But it means, you know, finding ways to do that. Um, all right, so you want to have your document open before you open Camtasia, and then you open your screen capture software. And I have an old version of Camtasia. It's uh, version 5. I think they're on version 7 now. Um, but basically, it'll be the same steps. It's just going to have a slightly different look to it. So I could do new screen recording here, or I could do make a recording at the top left. So let's do that. And the first thing we need to do is select the area that we want to record. So I'm going to go select area. And I want that square, I guess just the whiteboard square. I could make it the entire screen, but I'll just do the whiteboard right there. So I'm click. And this other stuff, I just pretty much leave at whatever it gets set to. And I don't change anything. Uh, I don't choose any preset sizes. I just leave it as the default settings and go from there. And if they don't look good after the video is made, then I might play around with it a bit. But Generally, it works without having to do any playing around. And then we'll do record. Oops, I was about to write on my paper. I need to write on my tablet. Okay, so record. And now we want to add four to both sides. And what I'm going to do is change the color. So I'm going to hit my color box here. Choose red. Now I add, whoops, that didn't work. Try again. Choose red, and all right, well, the red didn't work. You can see I don't use this software very often. <laughs> In journal, it works pretty quickly, and I'm sure it works quickly here when you're used to it. So you can make different colors, which is nice. Instead of with a webcam, you have to switch out pens. Um, and that X equals 10. And I'm going to stop it so it doesn't take too long to process. And again, it's got, it has volume, and um, yeah, I guess when you're choosing a color, it makes the color come on the screen. So it depends if you want that to show up to the students or not, if you want to put the color in. And we can either watch the whole thing or just say, okay, let's save that. And give it a file name, because we're going to want to search for it over at YouTube when we upload. So let me call this demo three. Now, 
I just saved it as demo three, and that is a Camtasia file, a Camtasia recording. What I need to do now is produce it in a, in a shareable format that we can then upload to YouTube, because you can't take the Camtasia recording and upload it to YouTube. So I'll hit OK for produce in a shareable format. And if you get a new version of Camtasia, you're going to have an option. I'm not sure where, but I think it's going to be in the presets. You'll have an option for YouTube. Um, so that's a nice feature. And um, right now, this one doesn't have an option for YouTube. So what I do is I just do custom production settings. And I've had lots of luck using either WMV, the Windows Media Video, or MOV, which is QuickTime. Uh, those work great. I've had pretty much luck using flash format, but sometimes it doesn't upload and I don't know why. So I usually avoid it and I just go WMV, just because I never ever run into an issue with that format. And basically everything else, you know, there's a lot of things like encoding options and sizes. I just ignore them and click through them. And the videos always come out fine without worrying about them, so I just don't even think about them. Just keep clicking through default settings, default setting, default setting. Um, I might give it a, a better title than Demo 3 or a better name, but I'll just leave it Demo 3. And now it's rendering. So it's taking it and turning it into the WMV format. Um, so you can see that this is adding, again, another, um, another X to the processing time. Right? So if you figure it takes you X amount of time to make the video or to do the problem app. Then it takes you X amount of time to render it in Camtasia. Then you go to YouTube and it takes you X amount of time to upload it to YouTube. So this will take three times as long about as if you do a record for webcam. But you do have a lot more possibilities with it. I actually made that one a little bit longer than I wanted to because they're, they're kind of slow to render. Okay, and then here it is, but we don't have to watch it. So I'll just exit out. Exit out. And now what we would do is go over and um, upload it to YouTube. But I do want to show you what's cool about using this method. I and mean, then that's the different, the power it gives you to add in all different features. Um, if you're in Windows Journal on a tablet PC, you'll be able to put in text boxes. Um, and maybe you want to, you know, show what the steps are of the problems that you're doing um, ahead of time um, before you actually solve out the problem. And you can also, whether you're in journal or smooth draw, you can go into any e-text that you want to or anything online or any document, and you can copy and paste something into it. So, for example, here I've got a graph template, so that way I don't have to always be making my graph uh, grid by hand. Um, and also, just so you know, that training packet that Alicia will send out later has graph templates there. Um, so you can just be copy and pasting from those if you want to. So what I can do now is I can copy this. <coughs> so, and that reminds me that I did not tell you another piece of good software to get. If you want to be able to copy and paste things from eBooks and from anything on your screen, then it's really worth it to get Snagit. And this is version Snagit 8 I have. Um, you can also get it at Academic Superstore, and it's about $30. So I would say open Snagit. I'm going to choose a region to copy, and I'm going to capture or you know, outline the portion I want to copy. I want to copy that graph. And here I could send it into different documents if I wanted to, but right now I just want to copy it, so I'm going to say copy all, and I'll close out, close, and then I'm back in smooth draw, and I paste, and I've got a graph. All right, now it works in Windows Journal, and then you can switch back over to the writing pen, and, you know, put in a line or whatever you want to do with it. So you do have a lot more options if you're using screen capture. Okay, have any more questions come in, Alicia, about that before I upload it? Okay. 
Yes, there's a couple questions that came in. I think it actually might be better if they ask you directly. Um, so Jamie Thomas has a question. Um, can we go directly from tablet PC to recording in YouTube without having to do Camtasia? Or does that only work or if, if you are recording from a web a webcam? Does, does I believe it only works recording from a webcam and um, or you're from you know mobile phone or something like that. What there is a feature in record from webcam that says Camtasia. So I'll go, I'm going to hop in to record from a webcam. And because I was wondering the same thing. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if I could just write on my tablet and it's going to go right into YouTube and I don't have to go through all, all the processing. Um, so there's a choice here for Camtasia. And I'm not really sure how it works. And I messed around with it and couldn't figure it out. So you know, whoever asked that, if you figure out a way to do it, um, I'd love to know. Um, so it's possible there's a way, but I think that you have to just do a webcam or some kind of picture device. So that's kind of a non-answer. Sorry, I couldn't help you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then we got another question too. Sure. Um, if you want to lecture on a board and then use the tablet, can you combine them into one video? Or can the webcam clear enough to see a whiteboard if I am writing on it? I would say a webcam is probably not good enough for res resolution, um, although it could be that you can get a really expensive one, might have good enough resolution. I've actually never gotten expensive ones. Um, I would say go for a digital camcorder, and then definitely you would have good enough re resolution to write on a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And you could also, um, if I understand your question, you're, you know, you're wondering can you combine that in one video where you also have something else that you made with a tablet? And you can do that if you have something like Camtasia. It's going to let you do a lot of editing where you can take different video files and put them um, in a timeline and show you know, from videos from different sources all in one video. Is that what you were asking? So, yep, OK. She said yes. <laughs> yeah, um, it would take quite a long time for rendering and things like that, but it's definitely doable. And you can also have picture in a picture, which is really nice because um, you know you can set it at the top right of the screen. It will be your face, um, you know, so the the students can actually still see you even though they're just washing your hand without a problem or something like that. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature to personalize screen capture videos. And okay, so let's go ahead and um, link our videos from YouTube. I mean, from my math lab. So we already copied one of the videos that was in the video manager, the one I want to So again, um, if you want to paste or copy one of your videos, you open it up in the video manager. And oh, in that Camtasia screen capture one we just did, um, you would still do the same choice for upload. You would do upload video file, search for it, click on it, and then you would um, do the same thing as the one we recorded with the webcam. Okay, so now we want to, you know, paste one of these into my math lab. So you find the video you want in Video Manager and you click on Share. And then just make sure your URL is, hi is highlighted. Control C. Now I'll go up Math Lab and paste it in. So first I'll paste it into homework and um, then we'll make it just into a navigation button instead. So let's see, to make it into the homework, and this is, might be possible in other course management systems, but I actually don't know. Um, but for my math lab, what you do is you go to control panel and click on homework test manager. And at the top left, I want to create an assignment. And I'm going to create a media assignment. And just so you know, all of these steps are also shown in the uh, training packet that you'll be getting. And there's also a training demo video on my website if you wanted to look through it again. Uh, so let's see, I'm calling this one Demo 3. Um, and usually what I do is I just label it by section. I'll make a media assignment for each section. Uh, you can make and I'll put a whole bunch of different videos in there. You can make a media assignment per
for a video if you want to, so you can do it a lot of different ways. And here I want to, let's say we just want to make a media assignment for this video. I'm going to click on the top right here, add my own media. And I've got a URL address, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And that's what's so nice and flexible about YouTube is it's always just the URL address. So you just uh, paste your website in there, call it demo3, uh, choose type, I'll call it a website. And you have to associate it with one chapter. So let's see, linear equations, chapter two. And usually I put the section and objective also uh, because when I switch over to a new edition, I want all that stuff to migrate nicely into my new edition course. And as long as it has specifications for where to put it, it can migrate nicely. And save. Then I'll go to next. And I will choose to save and assign down at the bottom right. And now it should show up right at the bottom of all of the homework and test assignments. So there it is, demo three. Usually I would reorder it wherever it goes. But I'll just leave it there for now. And let's go see what the student sees. So back into student view, student goes to homework online. And at the very bottom, they're going to see the video we just put in there. And they can click on it, and it's going to open right up. Add four to both sides, and we get um, So it's really quick to link to your videos. Um, it can be time consuming, though, depending on how many videos there are. And then it gets to be a worry of, you know, what if I want to switch uh, textbooks or go to a new edition? Will it, will it really migrate nicely? Yeah, so you can also link just through a navigation button. Um, that's an easier way to link. So let's go ahead and do that. And did any more questions come in, Alicia? Because you can just like break in any time if they do. No, nope, I think we're up to speed on the questions. <laughs> right. Um, so let's say here in syllabus, uh, I could call that one YouTube videos if I wanted to. And if you haven't made your own navigation button before, in my math lab how you do that is control panel. And then we go to manage course menu. And this is also in that training video that I made. And then you can create a content area right here at the top. And you can create the content area and call it anything you want. And then you'll be all set. You'll have whatever navigation button you want. Um, so let's pretend syllabus says YouTube videos. So I would just go in there, top right, edit view, and then I want to paste in an external link. Now we could right here put in that URL address we copied for this specific video, but what I do when I link in navigation buttons instead is I will link over to the YouTube channel itself. So I'll say H ttp colon slash slash and then put in www.youtube.com slash and instead of um, my channel is Robichaud D, I'm going to put in QCC Math instead. Um, that's a math department YouTube channel at Quinn Sigmund Community College. Um, just so we can take a look at that too. And then I would call this um, I don't know, I'll call it QCC Math Channel. Yep, channel. There we go. And the only thing to watch for here is open in a new window. Yes. Uh, that makes it a lot easier for the students to navigate. Submit. Okay. And then display view so we see what the student sees. So now when they click on the link, it brings them right over to the YouTube channel. So if this was, um, you know, my channel, they would go in and search, or it works in this channel too. You go in and search for whatever video you want. Um, that's one another way to link students to your channel very quickly. So if you just start making videos and you don't have time to link to them individually, just put in a link for your channel and you'll be all set. Your students will have access to it. And if you do eventually 
put your um, videos into playlists. This is really cool. You can link to a playlist. So this is my beginning algebra course. So in, um, at the QCC Math Channel, we have them by course so that it's most helpful to our students. Um, as opposed to at my own channel, I list them by topics just because I wanted it to be useful for all YouTubers out there. But at QCC Math, we do it by playlist. So you click on a playlist, so the course is beginning algebra, and you have the same kind of share button. So now I can isolate the videos my students are getting uh, sent to so that they don't have to be wondering, you know, where do I look? What am I supposed to put in here? So I just highlight the playlist, control C, go back into my math lab, and I would go through the exact same process we just did. I would um, edit view, external website, paste in the URL, or the uh, playlist itself. And then that would bring them over here. And um, so that's like a third way that you can link. So it's very easy to link to the videos. And I also mentioned um, training videos, so I want to make sure I show you those and where you can find those. Um, training videos playlist has demos, videos of everything we've done here today, so in my math lab linking, including how do you make a navigation button, uh, record from webcam, upload a video, and that one's made with a webcam. Link videos made with screen capture. Um, if you're in different states, you might have to worry about captioning. Captioning works very easily in Camtasia, so there's a very short sample with that. And a bunch of other stuff. Online office hours, if you have a tablet and you want to try that out, you can check that video out. And um, the other thing I wanted to show you here too, back to my channel, is if you want to link to homework help videos, um, feel free to link to any of mine. And if you go to the bottom right of my channel, you'll see the featured channels. And these are um, mostly AMATIC members who are instructors who have made videos and they're also willing to share their videos. So you can find pretty much any level of math you're looking for here too. And I think that rounds up everything I was going to talk about. Um, are there any follow-up questions? Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to, um, you don't have to IM them to me, feel free to ask. And just to, as, a, as a reminder, press star six or pound six if you muted yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, feel free to ask any questions, anyone? And if you come up with any, too, you, uh, feel free definitely to email me. And um, I assume, Alicia, you'll be sending out my email address? Yep, absolutely. Uh, and it's also on the training packet. So, you know, feel free to um, share that with other people. Email me if you got questions. And if you figure out new cool things to do with YouTube, I'd love to <clears throat> hear about those. And also, if you get a channel, or should I say when you get your channel, and if you are willing to share the stuff, I would love to have you listed under featured channels here and just have a lot of sharing going on. I had a quick question. Um, how did you get your videos into different playlists? How did you exactly get those to do that? That you can do a couple of different ways. So um, basically you do everything to manage video through Video Manager. And here, if I already have my playlist made, I can just pick a video and say Add To and pick out the, you know, the, uh, like if I want it in my functions, I add it to this playlist. And that would be it, it's added. Or you could, um, I'm not sure if you saw the choice there, but there was a choice to add a new playlist, so you could make a new playlist. And I think that once you make a playlist, it's um, by default, it's visible, I'm pretty sure. So you have to go and make it unvisible if you don't want it visible. Um, the other way you can make playlists is to, um, once you're in Video Manager, the left side is all the navigation buttons, you know, just like in my math lab. So you go to Playlist instead of Uploads, and that lets you, uh, on the top right, make a new playlist. So uh -huh. that's where I, you know, when I was first making them, I just went in there and I made, you know, Beginning Algebra, Intermediate Algebra, College Algebra. Then I went to Uploads, and I found all of the ones for Beginning Algebra and checked them off and said, Add to Beginning Algebra. Okay. That makes, sense? makes total sense. And the other program that I use, you use uh, Microsoft Journal. I use Microsoft OneNote and still use those pen capabilities to 
to kind of write on top of my tablet. So I think that might be another program that some people might have. That's something, so that only comes with, um, if you're using Microsoft, that would be like a PC. So if people have a Macintosh computer out there, do you, does anybody know of any software to write on? Because I don't have any experience with Macs. I'm assuming smooth draw would still work. Okay, so most people probably have PCs. Any other questions from anyone? Okay. Um, well, like I said, I'll be sending up a out a follow up email um, later today with Denise's contact info. If you do have something you want to ask her or something you want to tell her, even just to share information. Um, and like I said, I'll be sending out the recording link as well, so you can share this with colleagues or you can go back and watch it again. And then I'll be send, sending out the the training guide that Denise was referencing too, with all the details of how to do all these cool things. So. Um, Feel free to email me if you have any questions or email Denise. And with that, I think we're good. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you, Denise, for doing this. It was great. Very welcome. Bye, Bye everybody. Yep. Okay. Well, have a great day, everyone. <laughs> Bye.